Guide to Broadcasting Out of the UK into your homes, onto your phones and into your space. Um, welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you can give a thumbs up, you can give a thumbs down, you can share or you can subscribe. Um, I tend to talk about different subjects. Um, I change my subjects, like I change my style, my hair, my attitude. Yes, um, you never know what to expect with Black Bright. But that being said, I wanted to do the roundup of news, but I wanted to do a little bit, a little, well, let me not say a summary, but just some thoughts. There's been a lot of uh, messages going around um, talking about whether or not 5G is the reason for so many deaths and the, co the, the coronavirus being a cover-up. Um, I don't know either way. I'm not an expert in the field. I just wanted to give my thoughts because basically the coronavirus appears to be real. It's actually a real disease. It's not a fabricated disease. So we've got We've got that on the one hand, and then we've got this 5G, um, I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory, but we've got people who believe that 5G is the reason for the, the um, radiation rays in 5G are what are giving people um, the corona-like symptoms. Um, there's also some people say it's affecting black people and black communities more than it's affecting any other community. So we've got a lot of different things going on. One thing for certain is that even if the 5G is a conspiracy theory, well, even though, not, not that it's a conspiracy theory, even though if 5G being turned on is what's causing the deaths of so many people, it cannot discriminate. It cannot discriminate through age. It cannot discriminate through gender. It cannot discriminate through religion. It would mean that everybody who got within its rays would die. Yes, okay, there are people who have underlying conditions who would be more susceptible to the radiation rays if it was very, very close by. But by and large, you'll see a lot of people walking around with bleeding noses, trembling, uh, and having a lot more um, acute symptoms than what we're seeing. At the moment, it seems to be focusing on the elderly, whatever it is. Yes, they have a low immune system. And we have to bear in mind also that a lot of black people have underlying symptoms too. There's high blood pressure. There's diabetes, there's sickle cell, there's asthma, and you know, and lupus. A lot of those are assigned more to black people than they are to white people. So, if uh, these people have, if black people have these underlying conditions, they are more likely to die if they're caught in either the rays of coronavirus or 5G. So what they're saying about 5G is, yes, it's being rolled out. I think by 2021, they're going to be all over the place. And there's these fears that we are all going to be treated like we're confined in a microwave oven. But what I understand is that a microwave oven is 700, about 700 watts. And then the rays in a microwave oven are in a confined area. Whereas if you think about 5G in a phone, the wattage is about one watt and it's in a wider space. And if you know when you go to the dentist and if they're constantly in, you know, when they're giving you an x-ray, if they were constantly exposed to that radiation in, in the room, I mean, I'll go in, they don't protect me because I'm only going in there once, but they'll protect themselves by either going out of the room or standing quite a distance away because they are doing about, I don't know how many, how many x-rays they do a day, but they're being exposed to radiation all the time. So if you kind of think of it like that, I'm not saying that the 5G isn't bad for us, but I still think that if you, if, People are talking about 
it targeting and killing everyone and depopulating the world. Can you imagine? It would be indiscriminate. And you know what would happen, me going into my little tandem? What would happen is, is that, okay, suppose they turn 5G on and everybody start dropping dead like flies. That's not what the um, elite, the 80%, the 20% of the elite would want. Not yet. Not now. They're not prepared for everyone to die now. And I think what might be happening is that whatever's going on, it's got out of control. I don't know what's going on. But from the look of Trump's face the other day, he looked pretty nervous. He looked quite scared. And I've never seen him. He normally brushes things off. It looks like he's really concerned. And what I think is happening or has happened is that something's got out of control. Now, what will happen if it gets out of control is that um, supposing just worst case scenario, this thing goes totally off the wall and everybody drops dead, except for the 20 percent um, of the rich and the elite. I know they've, they've got their they, they have their 5G, which they're happy with. That will run all their robots and it will run all their drones and it would do. They'll have fast Internet and they can interact with each other. But I don't think they've quite conceived the idea that they will be interacting purely with robots. And you know what will happen then? Then they'll start fighting with each other and competing with, with each other because they can't compete with the robots. The robots are all, almost perfect. And you can't argue with a robot. You can't control a robot. You can't have a robot as a slave. You can't dominate a robot. So what's going to happen to their egos? So something is happening. We don't know what it is. And I'm not quite sure um, whether it has anything to do with 5G towers or not. And I don't know how the coronavirus is spreading so quickly. I mean, I saw a video where they had some Chinese people going in somewhere. It People say they're going into... Um, Downing Street. It didn't look like Downing Street to me. Honestly, the door and the outside of Downing Street is totally different. But you get people sending stuff around, trying to hype up what is going on and putting their little two cents in. It's really irritating. So, you know, I've got a countdown on my WhatsApp. I'm, you know, I'm not even looking at it, to be honest. I'm not downloading anything. I'm just, I kind of, I've, I've said to myself, I'm going to give myself maybe a two or three day break. And then, you know, I'll try and scan it and see if there's anything that pops out that I see might be interesting. Something that might make me smile or something like that. But it's got to the point where so many people believe they're experts. And I'm not, I, I'm, I'm constantly saying I am not an authority on any of the, any of the subjects I talk about. I get interested in the subject and I might look a little bit more into it but I'm not an authority so it's no point asking me any deep questions because I won't be able to answer them I just kind of share my thoughts and my opinions on the subject so that was my thoughts and opinion about the 5g and the actual coronavirus which you know they reckon 80.9% um, get through it, have mild symptoms. I think it's 4.7% are critical, likely to die. And you've got 17.8% or something that um, goes through severe, but not deadly. They have all, you know, the chest, the pains, the breathlessness. They're probably coughing really a lot. And they have to, after that, they have the seven day, 14 days in isolation and all that stuff. And then, of course, you have the more severe cases, the 4.7, who not even the ventilators can save them because they've just gone too far. They've developed pneumonia, in fact, um, which, in, which has infected their lungs. And there's nothing that they can really do. So we've got lots of things happening simultaneously. I'm not quite sure if the government knows how to handle it. I think, like I said, I think it's spiralled out of control. It's also affecting people, I don't think, 
they thought it would affect. And yes, so we're in this position now where nobody, I don't think anybody knows what's happening. All you've got is a lot of do-gooders telling us to wear our masks and telling us to isolate and telling us to build up our immune system. But that thing has been let loose, whatever it is. And as I keep on telling everyone, everyone should wear a mask. So, because what happens is they have, I think they said 80.9% are asymptomatic. What that means is that you don't even show any symptoms. Children come amongst that as well. You can actually have it, but you're not showing the symptoms. And the bad thing about that is that people are going around thinking, oh, yeah, well, I'm all right, I'm all right. But they can spread it to somebody else who doesn't have the same resilience that you have. So, And that is why it's spreading, because there's such a high percentage of people who are asymptomatic, spreading it to people who have got a less resilience. And so what's happening with those people who've got a less resilience, they're walking around with it. And then in, you know, seven to 12 days or whatever the latency period is, after that, they start showing symptoms and it's too late. It's spread because between that time, how many, how many people has that person who is asymptomatic spread it to other people? So that is what we're facing, peeps, at the moment. So all I'm saying is that just from my humble advice, just from commonsensical point of view, everyone, if you're going out of the street outside your family network, wear a mask. You might feel stupid in a mask. It might not go with your hairstyle. It might not go with your outfit. But if you are asymptomatic, you need to think about protecting other people. And that's all I've got to say. Now, I'm supposed to be doing a roundup, aren't I? So I'm just going to do a quick roundup because I didn't expect to go on that too long. So there's no stimulus package for illegal immigrants. Um, apparently, um, one of the reporters said to um, Donald Trump, um, I've got a question for you. Over 5 million immigrants in this country pay taxes through their ID numbers. I'm not quite sure how that works, though. Oh, immigrants. OK, these aren't illegal immigrants. So five million immigrants in this country pay taxes through their ID numbers, yet will not receive any money in their stimulus package. That's not good. I thought when I first read that, I mean, I did read it pretty quick. I really thought he was talking about undocumented because the heading of the newspaper article was no stimulus package for illegal immigrants. So I automatically thought that illegal immigrants would not be receiving any stimulus package, which I thought, well, that's, that makes sense. Because to be honest, he's going to look after his citizens first before he looks after any illegal immigrants, if he would even look after them anyway. But this is saying immigrants, but that has to be undocumented immigrants or something. It can't be just immigrants, because how would you know? Not unless what he's saying is only citizens will receive any money in their stimulus package. Maybe that's what he means. And if you're not a citizen, that's a whole different ball game. There's going to be a lot of people out of work. I hear 6.64 million are, un are, un are unemployed and they're trying to claim for unemployment benefit in America. It's hazardous. If you thought the government shutdown a couple of Christmases ago was bad, they haven't seen anything yet. So... Uh, no undocumented immigrant will receive any aid from the government during this crisis. And then he's saying, how do you suppose they'll survive during COVID-19? This is what a reporter is asking Donald Trump. Donald Trump responds, well, you know, we're saying undocumented, meaning they came in illegally. A lot of people would say we have a lot of citizens right now that won't be working. So what do you do? It's a tough thing. It's very terrible. It's very sad. I must be honest with you, but they came in illegally. And we have a lot of people that are citizens of our country that won't be able to have jobs. 
So, yeah, I mean, I understand that completely. If it's illegal immigrants, I understand that completely. You'd have to give priority over on your citizens rather than illegal immigrants. That goes without saying. But the part about immigrants, I'm not too sure about that. He's probably talking about people on green cards who haven't got their green cards back. You know, like we've got um, with our home office in the UK, we have a lot of people waiting um, in line. They've put the application in and it just hasn't been approved. And now with this lockdown, they've got no chance in hell of it being approved. And they are going to be in a similar situation as what he's calling immigrants. I think that's what's happened. Because those people won't be able to claim um, any benefits either from the government. They've got no recourse to public funds. So I think it's the same kind of thing that they're talking about. OK, so Senator Kamala Harris says communities of colour feel the coronavirus harder than others. Um, and that's what I was saying. Apparently, the host, Don Lemon, suggested that black families, like I said, and children are 20% more likely to have underlying conditions or pre-existing conditions. So it is important that as this pandemic or whatever is going on, we do not become victims to it. It's so important. Too many times, because of past conditioning, we become victims. We think it's them against us. And in some cases, I admit, when you're dealing with the police and you're dealing with certain systems, it is. But we have to try and take that victim mentality out because otherwise we won't be thinking rationally and we won't be behaving rationally and then we'll become depressed. So we have to make sure that our thoughts, our feelings don't affect our thoughts and our thoughts don't adversely affect the outcome. So I think I'm going to leave you with that. I went on a bit long. And um, yes, bye.